why your foundation might be cracking. So this is a general conversation. We're going to have like a foundation 101. Uh, if you have stuff going on with your foundation, uh, foundations, there's a lot of different types of foundations. Um, so if you're in, at all in question, go ahead and call your structural, local structural engineer about your issue. But uh, that's my little CYA conversation. So, But we're going to talk about why possibly those foundation cracks are happening in your single family home. and. I'm going to use the box as a demonstration. So it's important to note a couple things about a typical residential foundation. It's very similar to a, a, just a cardboard box design. So if this is your vertical foundation walls, short side, long side, the bottom is your concrete slab in your basement. Let's think of that as the bottom of the box. Top of the box is your main floor system of your house. So this is where you're, you're walking on your main floor and your basement's below it. The diaphragm on your basement, on your, uh, on your basement slab and the diaphragm on your main floor framing creates the strength of the box. Now it's important that you, you hear terminology, my, my foundation walls are retaining walls. Uh, not in the engineering sense. Typically our residential walls are not retaining walls. They don't freestand and allow and resist soil pressure against it. That's a retaining wall. On a typical residential, uh, we, the, the, the floor framing and the basement slab is what resists the soil loads against. So again, so if you consider this box buried, this is our demonstration so okay I'm gonna move to this let my staff kind of get a get a view on that we got that so the external soil pressure against here's your footing here's your wall in your basement eight or nine feet or whatever it is here's your floor where you your main floor system here and then you're framing your main floor framing up here for your first floor. The external soil pressure against the outside foundation is triangular in nature, meaning as it gets deeper, the pressure gets greater. Obviously, when, when there's no soil, it's zero pressure against the wall, and then as it gets deeper, it gets bigger. So what is this number here? This is kind of surprising. Depending on the soil type, if you have a sandy soil, versus a heavy clay soil can matter, you can double. But let's talk about an average. Let's pick, let's pick, um, let's pick 60 uh, as what we call this, this P number. So in this world, if you run the numbers, a typical eight foot soil pressure against your wall, for a, a clay soil, you could have upwards of 1800 pounds pressure on your exterior wall when it's saturated against your wall for every foot. So here's, if you have a 30 foot foundation wall, let's say, times 1800, that's the total load against your, against your house. So if we even took an average of a thousand times 30 feet wide, we could have as much as 30,000 pounds pushing against your wall. Pretty staggering. That most often occurs when what we call saturated condition of soils. So when you hear that, hey, drainage against my, away from my house is important or causing my problem, it's that saturated soil pressure uh, is, that, is that number we, we, we're concerned about. So Drainage away from your foundation is critical. Drainage away from your house is critical. Why? Because soils get heavier when they're wet. And that's when you start getting that 30, 40,000 pounds against a 30 foot long foundation wall. Okay, so we've cut the, we've cut the basement in half so we can see some detail. The, uh, again, the external soil pressures against that foundation has to be resisted by the floor system and your basement slab in a typical basement configuration. So if this 
connection here, which is again that anchor bolt every four to six feet connected to a two by four sitting on your wall, if, if that fractures underneath that because of that load, uh, we're going to get essentially something in the character of, of this kind of movement here. That wall is going to separate itself in from that floor diaphragm. And that's, that's what we see. And we're going to show you a picture here. You can see that on the outside of the home. As you look at in your backyard, your front yard, side yard, you can see that wall separating from your floor system. Uh, pretty common just to, to actually see two, three, four inches. But as we do that, if that happens in that case, the characteristics of the crack that you're going to see, if you're, again, this is, this is your basement level, uh, main floor, you're in your basement, if you're looking at your wall, what you're going to see is a, is a, is a diagonal crack, like that. So I'm going to show that, see if I can show that. So you're going to see that, that diagonal crack at an angle. And that's typical of your wall rotating inward, your connection to your floor uh, is no longer intact and is given away. Now, another common failure due to lateral soil pressures is the scenario where the connection to the floor and the connection to the concrete basement slab is still intact, but the wall itself bends in. And we can show you that with a with a clay uh, model here in a second. But in the in the cardboard box model, it bends inward in the center. It does that, and when it does that, you know, again, our floor connection is still good, our basement slab connection is still good. But what's happening is the structure of the wall itself isn't strong enough to resist that and we get that horizontal type cracking. If, if this was your foundation wall, we just cut through it and let's say uh, the, the external soil pressure soils are here, it's fixed top and bottom, what's going to happen is that that wall is going to bend like that. Again, we, we don't have a failure at the connection at the slab, we don't have a failure at connection at the floor, we're actually getting that and what you can see is the inside portion of your wall, the basement side, this is the soil side, this is in compression and this is in tension. And this, when this wall starts bending this much, you're gonna actually start getting that crack. You're gonna actually see that horizontal crack again in the center or somewhere uh, along your foundation. Now these are two of the these are two cracks you might see in your foundation, again, due to lateral soil pressures. We'll talk about it at a different point in time, cracks you see in your foundation due to settlement or swelling clay soils. It's a different type of crack, but these are the two most common uh, lateral soil pressures you'll see. If you have a foundation uh, where you actually have a walkout scenario. Let me cut this real quick. If you have a walkout scenario where you don't have a wall on one side of your foundation, uh, what happens uh, is interesting. So if you have soil, let's say this is the front of your house, if you have a walkout basement, um, be aware that you could potentially just this side, the pressure from this side, doesn't have any really resistance and if you have that scenario what you can see is your house rotating or pushing over and that can create a little bit different action you'll see that back wall of your house actually out of plumb so if you're in that kind of a situation you may want to pay attention to that um, we're going to leave a couple names um, if this looks familiar uh, with your home situation at all um, there's two companies that uh, make great products resolve this. We'll leave those up uh, for your reference at the end of the video. Um, and they're nationwide, so you should be able to find somebody to help you. And that's it. Those are the two
common cracks you'll see in your foundation is due to lateral soil pressures on a standard foundation, typical foundation type. 